All right, so we're talking about uh, bonding in this chapter, chapter six. Are there some nice markers here? Excuse me? I said, I wonder where you got those nice markers from. I don't know, but somebody tried to bribe me. Oh, I wonder who. Yeah. What is saying is no, they are not. <laughs> what is saying is we need to bribe more. More. Mm. All right. So put your iPad away, please. All right. Take out your notes. All right. Take out your uh, take notes. We're talking about bonding. All right. So my class can help with this. Uh, but why do atoms want to bond? To get a full valence shell. That's how they didn't do this. But why do they want to bond? They want to become stable. All right. Become stable. They're greedy. All right. Elements on the periodic table, they are not stable by themselves. That's why we do not see them by themselves in nature. We do not just go walking along and find a piece of sodium. We do not just find a piece of potassium uh, walking along. They're always combined with something else. So why do atoms bond to become stable? To become stable, All right? How do they become stable? I'm What's that? All right, a full outside shell of valence electrons. We learned in last chapter, all right, electron configuration, electron dot structure, electron uh, orbital notation. Uh, a full outside valence shell of electrons, we follow the octet rule. Octet rule says what? Oh, the, the atoms to be stable bond to attain full valence electrons. Of? Uh, Eight, eight valence electrons. Eight. So the most valence electrons we can get is eight. Reason is, if we follow the periodic table, our electron configuration, 1s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. When we get to this element, we drop a level. So 4s2, 3d10, 4p6. So my outside energy level will always have an S and a P sublevel before a D sublevel gets added. So that's why we only have eight valence electrons. So we want to have eight. So why do we want to bond? We want to become stable. How do we get stable? We get eight. How can we get eight valence electrons? How can an atom get eight valence electrons? By bonding or giving. Sharing? Giving. Giving? Or losing. Or losing. Giving, sharing, or losing uh, to get eight valence electrons. Wait, isn't giving and losing the same? Hmm? Yeah. Or taking. Alright, yes. Giving or losing would be the same. Alright, or taking. Alright, so So we get a full valence shell of electrons by the octet rule. Every atom desires to have a full valence shell of electrons of eight electrons. All right, how do we figure out how many valence electrons an atom has? By the column, no, column, uh, column. You're right first, column number? Column number. 1A has? One. 2A has? Two. 3A? Three. Four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight. Transition elements. Two, two. 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 All right, one, one or two, but most likely two. There's like what? Valence electrons. electrons. All right, silver has one. It was the one that had one. Uh, but there's some other ones in there that has that variation. So if I have one valence electron, it wants to have eight. So it has two choices. To gain seven or to lose one. Now, we talked about the Bohr model. Here's lithium, three, valence, uh, three electrons. 
one valence electron. So become this second energy level. Second energy level wants to have how many how many electrons can a second energy level hold? Eight. 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 How do you figure that out? Two n squared. <coughs> first energy level has one, so two times one squared would be. The first energy level has two. I'm sorry, two energy levels. So two times two squared would be a total of eight. So. If we lose one, now we have an outside energy level on the first energy level that only has two. But it's full. So, what elements do not observe the octet rule? The noble gases. First five. Oh, the first, first five. five. Yeah. Hydrogen. It only has one energy level, and it can only have two. two. All right, helium which has only one energy level, that can only hold two. two. So hydrogen and helium, to get a full outside energy level, needs how many? One. To get a full outside energy level, how many do they need? Two. two. So that does not follow the octet rule, but it's still full outside energy level. So therefore it's stable. Lithium, which I already had drawn here, And then beryllium, and then what's next? Boron, those five elements, hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, and boron will not satisfy the octet rule. Will not satisfy the octet rule. All right, lithium, beryllium, and boron will not gain electrons. Why not? Because uh, you have to gain or right, even. Yes, even so, but why will they not gain electrons? We talked about that as well last chapter in our trends, periodic trends. Why will those not attract electrons. Remember our trends that we talked about? A low electronegativity, which a low electronegativity is the tendency of an atom to attract, attract electrons. When they're bonded, what was the other trend that dealt with electron affinity? Electron affinity. What was the difference between electron affinity and electronegativity? Affinity was the ability to, to take away, take away, no, add, to take away, no, to share, no, uh, one was bonded atoms and one was unbonded atoms. Oh. Electron affinity is the tendency of an atom, unbonded atom, so lithium by itself, to attract an electron, the energy that's given off. Electronegativity is when lithium is bonded with oxygen, right? The de tendency for it to attract and hold an electron when it's bonded with another element. So these will not attract electrons because the electronegativity and the electron affinity is very low. Because if we go left to right, electron affinity does what? Decreases. It increases. All right, just for a review, why does it increase? Because uh, more protons and electrons, so therefore the energy electrostatic attraction increases, so therefore it, it, it has more strength to attract that electron. All right, so these five elements, helium, hydrogen, lithium, boron, beryllium, five elements that will not satisfy the octet rule. All they will have is two of them. But we still have a full valence shell of electrons. Valence shell of electrons. So the octet rule.
natural tendency of atoms to have a full outer shell of electrons of eight. The exceptions would be hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, and boron. All right, so when we're bonding, we bond become stable. There's three types of bonding. Three types of bonding. They are ionic, covalent, covalent and metallic. And metallic. Three types of bonding. Ionic, covalent, and metallic. Ionic occurs between? Uh, metals and non-metals. Where are my non-metals in the periodic table? Everything to the right. On the right, the stair-step right, line. line. Where are my metals? Left of the stair-step line. Left of the stair-step line. So an example? Uh, sodium chloride. What type of bonding? Ionic. Ionic, because sodium is a? Non-metal. Sodium is a? Metal. Metal. Sorry. Chlorine is a? Non-metal. Non-metal. My bad. Any non-metal and metals bonding would have ionic bonding. What's happening to the electrons? Uh, they are transferring. Transfer. Of electrons. Electrons are being transferred. All right, why are they being transferred? Because there's a big difference in electronegativity. All right, a great difference. Electronegativities. One has a low tendency to attract an electron. One has a high tendency to attract an electron. So my example was two kids fighting for the same toy. If one is stronger and bigger, which one's going to win? The bigger one. The bigger one. So it will take the toy away from the smaller one. The smaller one would cry, go to his mom, and say, "My my brother stole my to my toy," and the big one wins. Same thing with ionic. The non-metal is more electronegative, more electronegative than the metal, so therefore it will steal the electron from the non-metal and keep the electron. When an electron when an atom gains an electron, what happens? When an atom what? When an atom gains an electron, what happens? It becomes, it becomes a negative charge. When an atom loses an electron, what happens? It becomes positive. Becomes positive. What happens when we have opposite charges that are close to each other? They attract. They attract. So therefore, chlorine steals sodium's electron. It becomes negative. Po sodium becomes positive. So guess what? They attract each other and they combine. So they bond together. So that's what's happening in ionic compounds. Non-metal and a metal. Electrons are being transferred. Why? A great difference in electronegativity. The metal is a low electronegative. And a non-metal. Spell non-metal wrong. Is a high electronegative. So ionic bonding. All right, my class will be will have to recognize a compound and be able to tell me if it has ionic, covalent, or metallic. All right, how are we going to tell? Is one of them a metal and is one of them a non-metal? All right, where are my metals? On the left side of the periodic table. Where are my non-metals? On the right side of the periodic table. So we should be able to tell if I have a metal and a non-metal for ionic bonding. Covalent. Covalent occurs between? A uh, non-metal and non-metal. A non-metal and a non-metal. A non-metal and a non-metal. What's happening? There's a tight sharing of electrons. All right, a tight sharing of electrons. Why do we have a tight sharing of electrons? The both have high electronegativity. Where are you with us? Are you taking notes? Or are you on your iPad? What's that? Is it 
picture of the board. Okay. All right. A tight sharing of electrons. What is the electronegativities of our nonmetals? High. They're both high. So it's like the same two kids fighting for the same toy. If they're both the same height, both the same build, both the same strength, all right, they're both grabbing and fighting for the same toy, who wins? No one. No one wins. They keep on fighting, so if nobody wins, they are basically sharing the same toy, even though they're fighting over it, they're sharing, nobody steals it from the other. So it's a tight sharing of electrons. Similar electronegativities. Both have high electronegativities. So we'll be able to tell if we have a covalent compound because we have nonmetal. Take for instance H2O. H2O, hydrogen is a nonmetal, oxygen is a nonmetal. Now don't get confused because hydrogen is on the left hand side. You notice it's on the top of the periodic table separated from the rest. Hydrogen is a nonmetal. It's over there because it only has one valence electron. So hydrogen is nonmetal, oxygen is nonmetal, covalent bonding. We are sharing electrons. The electrons are tightly shared. All right, so it has a fairly good bond. So uh, hydrogen is sharing elect oxygen electrons, and oxygen is sharing hydrogen electrons. And that's what holds them together in that compound's bond. Uh, for that tight sharing. Metallics occurs between metals. metal and a metal. When a metal and a metal shares electrons, it is a loose sharing, loose sharing of electrons. A loose sharing. Why is it a loose sharing of electrons? They both have low electronegativities. They have both low electronegativities. Have both low electronegativities. Like we have here, similar high electronegativities. This is similar low. Mm -hmm. Or low electronegativities. All right, so again, we have similar low electronegativities, a tendency, a low tendency to attract their electrons. So when we get two of those together, they are sharing the electrons, but it's going back and forth uh, because no one can win either, but it's not as tight as a covalent bonding. So if I have this compound, a compound of silver, so I have a chunk of silver, yep. all right, a bunch of silver atoms. What type of bonding does it have? Metallic. Metallic bonding. Uh, so you should be able to recognize if you have a compound, a, a chemical compound given to you, whether it has ionic, covalent, or metallic. Ionic, covalent, or metallic uh, bonding. So those are the three types of bonding. Anybody have any questions? Yes, sir. What's that? Uh, quickly. All right, wait. Hey, while you're out there, you can take care of your sweater, too. Anybody else? But the three different types of bonding. All right, so we'll stop there for today. All right, my class. Uh, what well, this is Wednesday, tomorrow night is homework. Continue, keep on.